Do we have too much government? We need to put uh, people in ahead of corporate profits. This system is so lopsided. This threat is a real threat to democracy. And I think that's really important. That's something we haven't been doing in this country for a long time. Where do you start? What do you do? How do you do it? Access to Democracy and other Egan Community Television programming is supported by Thomson Reuters, makers of Westlawn Next and based in Egan. Through Westlawn Next and other innovative online services, Thomson Reuters is the world's leading source of intelligent information for businesses and professionals. Online at ThomsonReuters.com and by U.S. Federal Credit Union the member-owned financial institution offering service, value, and experience you can trust to the greater Twin Cities community. And welcome. Access to Democracy returns with an exciting and very unusual program. And other than my apologies, because I'm going to butcher some names uh, in introductions here, uh, we're very lucky uh, because the 13th annual air show out at Eden Prairie has brought in two gentlemen who are with us today and an interpreter who I will introduce, uh, who met in 1972 at 15,000 feet in the air and they were flying planes and shooting at each other. And uh, the fact that they have met years later and have come here is just unique. So I will introduce uh, retired Brigadier General Dan Cherry, who has more citations and credits to his name uh, than the old proverbial Carter used to have liver pills. But <laughs> among other things, uh, you have the Silver Star, you uh, certainly uh, worked your way up from when you first signed up for the Air Force in 1959 until you retired, and now you are in charge of the uh, what is it, the American Heritage uh, Aviation Heritage Park Aviation. in uh, Bowling Green, Kentucky. And thank you, for Alan, for the introduction. Uh, I've been a lucky guy. There's no question about that. I had a wonderful Air Force career, and. Uh, and uh, I feel very privileged to uh, also be experiencing this amazing story with my new friend, Nguyen Hong Mi. And you actually embodied it in a book, My Enemy, My Friend, which yes. is available every place. And yes. that brings us to your friend, Nguyen Hong Mi. Mm -hmm. And welcome. Welcome to Minnesota. You came at the right time of the year. Uh, and welcome here. It's a pleasure to have you, uh, a hero of the Vietnamese Air Force. Uh, many citations. You came from a small, poor family of eight children and ultimately working your way through the system in communist Vietnam, you were one of two people out of 1,500 who qualified to go into the Air Force and ultimately to be trained to, fi uh, to fly MiG-21s. Uh, and you have many citations also, so welcome. And this attractive young lady is Tan Hung Lee, mm -hmm. and you are an interpreter, and uh, a little bit of background. Um, yeah, I'm working for the a language institute in Monterey, California. Very good. Well, welcome all of you. Thank you. <clears throat> now, give us a little bit of background about 1972 and then ultimately how you met. All right. In uh, 1972, I was a fighter pilot flying the F-4 Phantom. Uh, in Thailand. Actually, my base was at Udor in Thailand. And our primary mission was to protect uh, other American aircraft on bombing missions into the heart of North Vietnam and to be sure that they were not attacked by enemy aircraft during the course of their mission. 
And uh, it was uh, on April 16th that I was a part of a flight of four <coughs> F-4s with that very mission. And uh, we proceeded on up into the vicinity of Hanoi and uh, were fortunate enough to pick up on our radars uh, four MiG-21s uh, of the North Vietnamese Air Force. One of those MiGs was flown by Nguyen Hong Mi. We had a very intense air battle, uh, more commonly known as a dogfight, that lasted by dogfight standards a, a long time. It was in excess of four minutes long. Most dogfights in the history of aerial warfare are something less than a minute. I was going to say 30 seconds in yes. my experience is uh, not exactly. unusual for length. Well, we, we, uh, it was truly a, a life and death situation. Fortunately, I was able to maneuver to a position of advantage and, uh, and fired my muscle exactly at the right time and, uh, and scored the victory. Um, the missile tracked, uh, it's, it was a radar guided missile. Uh, uh, it was at minimum range. Uh, typically, air to air missiles require a certain amount of distance back from your target so that the missile has a chance to arm before, as it, uh, as it gets away from your airplane and approaches the enemy aircraft. And uh, so it was at minimum range, about 4,000 feet, when my missile impacted the right wing and blew it off of the MiG-21. MiG-21 quickly snap rolled and then about the first time around, uh, a parachute appeared. And it was literally right in my face. Uh, the parachute blossomed and I had to aggressively maneuver my airplane to the side to keep from flying through it. And as it turns out, the MiG pilot was there, clearly visible to me as I flew by him. And, uh, but I, at the time, of course, I, I thought he survived, but I didn't really know for sure. But there's no question that his airplane went down in flames. And so, uh, again, it was an exciting mission for me. Uh, and all of our... One of 295 missions that you flew, is one that of, correct? That is correct. One of 295. Now, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Hung Mi, uh, perhaps you can tell us what you experienced during this dogfight from the other side, and then finally your plane was hit, you parachuted to safety, fortunately he maneuvered away from your parachute, but you uh, sustained some serious and severe injuries. So tell us from your perspective what that was like. Mm -hmm. Uh, lúc mà anh máy bay của anh bắt đầu bị bắn sau khi anh có khả năng thoát được bốn hay năm tên lửa bị bắn rồi anh thoát ra ngoài anh bị thương như thế nào xin anh kể lại cho rõ tức là trong cái trận không chiến đó thì chúng tôi chỉ có hai người thế và khi tôi là bay số 1 còn số 2 của tôi bị lực lượng của của đối phương đông cho nên chúng tôi phải tách ra hai hai đường và lúc đấy chỉ còn một mình tôi đối phó với lại cái tốt của đen thì với lực lượng tranh lệch như thế tôi đã tránh được bốn quả tên lửa bốn năm quả tên lửa tức là cái động tác tránh tên lửa ấy, thì khi mà đen bắn tôi ấy, thì khi mà tôi ngoảnh lại này nhìn qua cái kính thì thấy cái, cái 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 ở dưới cánh tên lửa của F4 ấy nó lấy ra một cái tia tia lửa này tức là tại thời điểm mà đen bắn thì ở dưới cánh tên lửa nó lấy ra một cái tia lửa này thì khi mà tên lửa rơi khỏi bệ rồi thì tôi nhìn này đến lúc gần đến nơi thì bắt đầu tôi đạp chân và kéo máy bay Um, that day, uh, there was only my wingman and I, and we met Dangerous formation above, and I made a snap decision that we would fight independently. And uh, when Dangerous launched a missile, I could see uh, a flash of flame within four or five seconds before the missile. So I made um, um, 
I apply the cross control in order to avoid the first four or five missiles from the injury. And? Xin anh tiếp tục. Bởi vì nguyên tắc là khi mà tên lửa mới phóng ra ấy, thì bởi tên lửa tên lửa điều khiển, cho nên là nếu mà nếu mà kéo ngay thì cũng để cho nó tại thời điểm mà tên lửa phóng ra thì nó mới theo cái động theo cái radar thì nó điều khiển theo theo đối phương thế nhưng nếu mà bình thường nếu mà máy bay bình thường này thì không sao nhưng mà nếu ví dụ như tôi vòng bên trái thì ấy nhưng mà tôi lại đạp chân phải tức là tay thì kéo bên này và chân đạp bên này để cho khi máy bay nó không theo một cái quỹ đạo bình thường mà nó bị trượt thế này thì tên lửa không thể xe theo được um, that day uh, when a missile were launched uh, to the right side then I coordinate the uh, right turn with the left uh, rudder pedal so by applying the cross control um, the missile could not follow the air path that's why I could avoid four or five missiles from the injury in other words he swerved or he dove mm -hmm. to avoid the missile so that at least the first missiles did not hit him that's correct. Uh, <coughs> several of the missiles malfunctioned, and uh, I fired two that did not track properly, and my wingman fired three, and uh, some of them didn't work, and then the others, uh, Hong Mi skillfully maneuvered his airplane to avoid them. Yeah. Finally, uh, uh, ran, uh, managed to get in a position uh, so that one I could uh, lock on with my radar uh, and fire a radar guided missile which worked properly and uh, managed to uh, make its way uh, accurately to Hong Mi's airplane where it exploded. Now you bailed out but you were severely injured, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Um, khi máy bay anh bị đụng rồi anh nhảy dù ra rồi anh bị thương nặng xin anh kể lại cái hệ thống dù như thế nào tức là khi tôi tránh được uh, khoảng 4 hoặc 5 quả tên lửa gì đó thì đến quả thứ sáu là quả cuối cùng thì ở vị trí tức là lúc đấy đen bắn từ phía sau thôi tức là vị trí 6 giờ ấy thì lúc đấy tôi không, không vì không nhìn thấy cho nên là không tránh được và cuối cùng uh, Tức là tôi đang kéo này thì thấy tự nhiên này đẩy đi Đẩy mạnh đi và lúc đấy tôi bảo ờ thế chắc là trong đầu nghĩ là máy bay bị trúng tên lửa Thế nên tôi làm động tác nhảy dù Làm động tác nhảy dù nhưng mà khi mà bắn cả cái ghế dù ra khỏi máy bay thì yeah, họ, uh -huh, Cái hệ thống bảo vệ tay nó không làm việc Bởi vì bình thường ở MiG-21 ấy thì nó có cái bảo vệ chân này Bảo vệ tay nó có lưới bảo vệ tay và nó ấy đâu Thế nhưng mà khi bảo vệ tay không làm việc cho nó hắt cái thì nó gãy, gãy ngang này, gãy ngang này. Ừ. Okay. After being able to avoid four or five missiles, I could not avoid the last one launched by Dan Cherry. And I felt my aircraft take a violent hit and I had to bail out. And I ejected the button from MiG-21. That was a, a system, um, a special system up to restraining straps that help to keep protect the pilots both arms and legs and that day um, the system did not work so as soon as I bail out um, the um, effect of the wind blast broke my both arms immediately tác dụng của dòng khí vì tác độ lớn cái đấy là do tác dụng của tác động của dòng khí nó bẻ cạnh tay ừ. không hề va chạm vào đâu cả. So không rồi đúng rồi. Thế và sau đó thì tôi bị gãy cả hai tay rồi thì lúc dù nhìn thấy nhưng không điều khiển được và cứ thế dù nó bay xuống rừng. Gãy ba đứt Thế và khi xuống bởi không điều khiển được cho nó bị tiếp đất nó ấy mạnh thì nó bị chùn mất ba nút sống gãy nó ba nút back I know was badly injured yes. even though my my knee was trying to control the parachute my both arms did not respond at all well they were both that broken mm. but, yeah. that's why my parachute tripped it freely and it came down to the jungle and uh, 
ejection force combining with the parachute landing compressed three of my spinal discs and broke my both arms. So, uh, the fact that you are here today is an amazing thing in and of itself. Obviously, there was a long recovery. Now, you two gentlemen had an unlikely meeting, though, just a few years ago. Tell us how that came about, Dan. Well, it was um, over the years since 1972, I, often I had wondered about the MiG pilot that I saw clearly in his parachute. Uh, I didn't really know if he survived, but I thought he did. But you never know in a situation like that. He could have been floating in his parachute and already died, or, or when he hit the ground he might have been fatally injured. But I did some outreach and I made contact with uh, a young lady over in Vietnam who is a television anchor. She does the nightly news on Vietnam television and her name is Tu Yin. And she also hosts a program there called The Separation Never Seems to Have Existed. And Alan, you might remember a program we had here years ago in the United States called This Is Your Life where they did I do, certainly do. They do video <coughs> profiles on people who have been separated for whatever reason and then on live television they reunite them and then the audience gets to experience the emotion of the reunion. Well she thought uh, that uh, my quest for the MiG pilot might fit the format of her show and so she sent me an email asked me to write her a letter and describe what I wanted to do and why and so I did that. I composed a letter and put it in an email and uh, told her that I'd always been curious about the fate of the MiG pilot. I wondered if he had a family. I wondered what his name was. Is he really alive or not? And uh, I, I told her the date and the time and the place of the dogfight. And I never expected anything to happen from that, but it was only two weeks later and I received another email back from her that said, we have found the brave MiG pilot and we want you to come to Vietnam and meet him on live te television. And that's how it all started. So it was a wonderful experience yeah, getting that message back. Did he know that back. you were coming to meet him? Uh, he did, by that time he did. Uh, the, the TV producer had contacted him and I think her first question is, was to him after they've confirmed the circumstances and identified him as the actual person who was involved. Then the next question was, would he be willing to meet me and meet me on television? And uh, of course I wasn't involved with that conversation, but obviously he must have said yes. And that's when the invitation was extended to me and we met each other face to face for the first time on live television. What were your feelings when you heard that, well now General Cherry was interested in finding out what happened to you and meeting you. Anh đã có cái cảm tưởng như thế nào khi anh được nghe rằng Thiếu tướng Dan Cherry muốn gặp anh và sẽ gặp gỡ anh? Khi, khi nghe đài truyền hình Việt Nam chỗ cô Thu Yên phóng viên truyền hình thông báo thôi là sẽ gặp Dan Cherry thì trong suy nghĩ của tôi tôi nghĩ là bây giờ chiến tranh kết thúc rồi nó cũng không có vấn đề gì nó phức tạp và trong quan niệm của tôi thì tôi với Dan chỉ là hai người lính ở hai chiến tuyến khác nhau chúng tôi đều làm nhiệm vụ của chúng tôi và bây giờ chiến tranh kết thúc thì chúng tôi gặp nhau chúng tôi có thể trở thành bạn When I heard uh, from Thu Yên that I was about to meet Dan Cherry I thought that that was very fine for me because now the war ended and we need to start friendship to America and um, this was a great experience for me when meeting Dan. And obviously it's a friendship that has lasted and uh, endured for these last few years. It has. It, it started off just right, <coughs> Alan. It seemed to me the chemistry was excellent right at the beginning. Uh, two fighter pilots, we had a lot in common. My intuition told me it would be that way and that's the way it worked out and as we've gotten to know each other even more over the last three or four years uh, and met each other's families, had dinner in each other's homes, 
uh, the friendship has only gotten, gotten stronger, and I'm very grateful for that. Now, you became an insurance agent, uh, and then ultimately you retired? Um, anh đã trở thành là nhân viên của công ty bảo hiểm và anh đã về hưu rồi phải không? Đúng rồi. Uh -huh. Sau khi tôi bị thương thì uh, tôi lại phải học tiếp bởi vì ta cái 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 bằng kỹ sư phi công thì ra ngoài không làm được cái gì cả cho nên tôi phải học tiếp đại học và học xong thì tôi về làm tại công ty bảo hiểm. Uh -huh. As soon as I got cho out. đến lúc về hưu năm 2006. As soon as I got out from the Air Force, um, I had to start my life from scratch. I was back to my college to finish the degree and worked for a, an insurance company and retired in 2006. And you went on to all sorts of a career. Uh, you were a major at this time, was that correct? That's right. I was 72 in 1972. Uh, yet you retired as a brigadier general. Yes. And you certainly have kept your interest with the Air Force in many capacities. Uh, tell us about your present venture, and also mention your website, uh, All right. so that if anybody wants to follow up on this, they can do so. Okay, I'll, I'll be glad to. Um, the Air Force is very good to me, Alan. It taught me a lot, gave me wonderful opportunities. And uh, one of the latest projects that I've been working on since I uh, retired actually from a second career has been Aviation Heritage Park in Bowling Green, Kentucky. And that's where we have on display the very airplane I was flying on the day, Phantom 550, that I was flying on the day that dog, the dogfight occurred between Hong Mi and myself. And so it's on display there. And, uh, and then the fact that we met, uh, I had so much encouragement from friends that were aware of the story that I should write some sort of a book about it. And I was apprehensive about doing that. I, had never written a book before, but the story is so unusual, so unique, I realized that somehow it needed to be documented, and I had some wonderful photography uh, that documented the first face-to-face -face meeting Hong Mi and I had from my friend John Fleck. And so uh, Aviation Heritage Park uh, uh, is something that where we restore aviation artifacts to tell untold stories about real people from our part of the country. And the book, My Enemy, My Friend, uh, chronicles Hong Mi, our relationship from 1972 all the way through uh, the current day. And, uh, and, uh, with, and the basic message is that, yes, it's a war story, but it's really more of a story of reconciliation, closure, forgiveness, and moving on from the past. As you recall... Which uh, you both obviously have done. We have, and yeah. many of our Vietnam veterans when they returned were not treated very well. And as a result, they've had great difficulty bringing closure to their wartime experience. And uh, so Hong Mi and I hope that our example of friendship and reconciliation uh, can somehow be a help to other Vietnam veterans, and we think that it is as we tell this story. It seems that it, that it is doing just that. You know, small world department, I actually visited Heritage Park a few years ago, wow. completely unknowing because uh, I love to go to, uh, and you can relate this to uh, Hong Mi as we're talking, uh, I love to go uh, to places that remind me. I mean, I'm, I'm old enough to have experienced World War II, mm -hmm. and uh, so I go to these places. I love to see the B-25s or the MiGs or, or, you know, the vestiges of the various wars. Right. And little did I know at that time that we would be here today. Well, that's great. I'm so <laughs> glad you've had that opportunity. And you mentioned my website. Uh, our, the book can be purchased on the website, and the entire story is laid out on the website as well. Myenemymyfriend.com, and uh, it's it's been yeah. a great experience. Consistent with your story, <coughs> my wife and I were at Pearl Harbor uh, about ten years ago, and 
we were fortunate enough to have a, an army guide touring us around Schofield Barracks and, and things like that. And we went out to the site of the Arizona. And the day that we were there was a reconciliation day from survivors from the Arizona and some of the Japanese pilots who had dropped the bombs on Pearl Harbor. And mm -hmm. it was really a very, very touching moment. I have pictures of it. Mm -hmm. uh, as these people got together for the first time, these young pilots who thought they were doing what was right for their country, mm -hmm. and our sailors <coughs> who felt likewise, and the terrible disaster that was Pearl Harbor. And uh, they met, and they clasped, and uh, they threw some bouquets of mm. flowers onto the water uh, where the oil is still rising yeah. from the Arizona. So I it's akin to the story that the two of you have, and it's a very touching story. Well, it is, and uh, like you say, reconciliation is a good thing for all of us. Would that there was more of it mm -hmm. uh, in the world and uh, in these very tense times. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but uh, let's hear a little bit about, uh, in the little bit of time we have left, about your family and uh, children, etc. Xin anh cho biết về gia đình con cháu của anh như thế nào. Tôi có hai con, một con gái và một con trai và một con gái. Con trai sinh năm 80, con gái sinh năm 82. À, con trai tôi thì hiện ở nay là sau khi tốt nghiệp đại học bách khoa thì làm nhận công tác ở ủy ban dân quận Hai Bà Trưng, tức là một cái cơ quan hành chính của thành phố. Và con gái thì làm ở hãng hàng không quốc gia Việt Nam. I have two children, one son and one daughter. The son was born in 1980 and the daughter was born in 1982. My son graduated from the Polytechnic University and he now has worked for the administration office belonging to Hai Ba Trung District, Hanoi. And my daughter has worked for Vietnam Airlines. Tôi có một cháu nội. Cháu nội của tôi cũng là cháu nội của Đen. Đấy là Hồng Đức và ừ. một cháu ngoại à, ừ. cháu Bảo Linh. Ừ. Ừ. I have one grandson. My grandson is Ben's grandson as well, and I also have my granddaughter. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't thank you all enough, uh, <coughs> General Cherry, uh, Nguyen Hong Mi, and our interpreter, without whom we would be at a distinct advantage. <laughs> Tan Hung Le, uh, thanks so much. We have actually run out of time. Access to Democracy says thank you and farewell. Yeah.